Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, along comes Jesus. Whenever we see that happening in the scriptures, something wonderful happens. Along comes Jesus to the wedding at Cana, along with his mother Mary and his disciples. And a wonderful wedding that was taking place becomes even greater when Jesus changes water into wine. Along comes Jesus to this well. And a woman from Samaria comes and has conversation with Jesus. And through that conversation, Jesus tells her that he can give her living water. And she senses that he is the Messiah, and she goes back to her village and tells the people to come out. And Jesus teaches those people the good news about the kingdom. Along comes Jesus, down a dusty road in Jericho. He stops under a sycamore tree. He looks up at a tax collector named Zacchaeus, and he tells him, Hurry down, I must come to your house today. And Zacchaeus is so happy, and Jesus tells him, Today, salvation has come to this house. Along comes Jesus, and things change. Things get better. Things are different. We see that today in our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 17. It is the traditional Thanksgiving Day gospel lesson that we hear every year. And you might be very familiar with this gospel lesson. We actually had this lesson just a month or so ago. The gospel lesson about Jesus and the healing of ten lepers. We know this story well. We know that Jesus, God, values the least. We know that God honors faith. We know that God cherishes gratitude. But there is so much more we can still learn from this gospel lesson. As we look at it more deeply, as we understand some of the words that are used in this particular passage. We know that leprosy is a horrible, horrible disease. In the ancient times, there was no healing. There was no cure for this disease. It would only get progressively worse. It really ultimately means you die. That was the great tragedy. Another great tragedy was that it was so contagious that people had to quarantine themselves to be outside of their community, away from their family and their friends. We know what that is like, being in quarantine. But we might quarantine for a day, a few days, a week. We've now come out of quarantine. But for these lepers, the quarantine was for life. They would never have their freedom. They would be in quarantine because their disease was so great. Leprosy ate away at your skin, ate away at your flesh, so that maybe your fingers or your limbs would fall off. It might affect your eyes and your ears. You might become deaf and blind. There was no cure for leprosy. Then along comes Jesus to this village, somewhere between Galilee and Samaria, Judea, somewhere. We don't know where it is exactly, but there is a little community of lepers, both Jews and Samaritan. And as Jesus is coming, these lepers cry out, Master, have mercy. 
I don't know if they knew who Jesus was. Perhaps word had spread that this is the Messiah and that he was coming through. Perhaps these lepers were so desperate that they would cry out to anyone who would pass by. But the word they used, calling Jesus Master, has a deeper understanding. The word indicates one who is a commander. They were saying, command us, lead us, implying that if Jesus would be merciful to them, they would follow him. And Jesus values the least. Those who are desperate, those who are unable to help themselves, those who are facing the most difficult struggles in life. Jesus sees these 10 lepers and he has mercy and he has compassion. He values the least. And Jesus says to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and 14, it outlines how lepers are to be separated from others. And it also tells about when and what you do if you should recover from leprosy. And Jesus instructs them to go see the priest who would then examine them and then be able to either proclaim they are healed or that they are not. Jesus tells them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. It was a matter of faith. And we know from Hebrews 11, 6, that it is impossible to please God without faith. And so these lepers went. Now, scholars have a different opinion. When did the healing actually take place? Did the healing of these lepers take place once Jesus spoke that word? Or did the healing take place because the lepers obeyed the command to go? Whether it was faith in the words spoken by Jesus or faith in action as they exercised their faith doesn't really matter. What matters is that faith was the power of God. Faith is how God worked through this healing. And so as these lepers went, God honored their faith and their healing was complete. We think about these lepers and they went and they looked at themselves and realized they were healed. That healing was a miracle. That healing was not just the stopping of the progression of the disease. It wasn't just they were not going to get worse. That healing was complete so that they were fully restored. Just imagine your skin is falling off. Your fingers have fallen off. But perhaps now They've grown back. If you were blind or deaf, now you could hear. If you could not walk, now you can. It was that a miracle? That healing was complete. It was a full healing. Imagine that picture. Imagine those ten lepers realizing what was happening to them. And one of them, a Samaritan, realizes what happens and he turns around and he shouts out from a distance he comes back to Jesus praising God for what had happened and he falls at Jesus feet and he worships him and God cherishes that kind of gratitude God welcomes that kind of praise and thanksgiving it's what we are reminded of in our reading from Philippians. How 
We are to be content in all circumstances, that we are to give thanks and prayer. That Samaritan leper came back to express his gratitude, to give his whole self back to God, to worship God through his gratitude. And Jesus says to that leper, where are the other nine? Didn't I heal ten of you? Is there only one who would come back to give thanks and it has to be a Samaritan? Just imagine that. It reminds us of how Jesus loved all people. And he healed all people. It did not matter if they were a Samaritan, enemies of the Jews, people who had heretical teachings, people who had some conflicts in their ancestry. It did not matter to Jesus, for Jesus came to heal all. His grace and his faith was for everyone. And he tells that leper, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Gratitude. We know God values the least. God honors faith and God cherishes gratitude. We know this story about the lepers. But did you know that when the healing of lepers, what we find in the scriptures, is always a supernatural event? There are no recordings of a natural healing of someone who had leprosy. Only supernatural healings. Miriam, Moses' sister, had leprosy for a week, and she was miraculously healed. Naaman had leprosy, and he was miraculously healed. And that's all we see in the Old Testament. There is no natural healing, no carrying out to the priests, but only supernatural healings. And in the New Testament, we have supernatural healings of these 10. And one other occasion in Matthew chapter eight, again, when Jesus reached out and touched a leper and brought healing to him. All these healings were supernatural. And so these healings are telling us something about Jesus. Just as the leper came back to give praise to God. He was acknowledging who Jesus was. He was acknowledging that Jesus was God himself. And he worshiped him. And that Jesus is that person who does the supernatural. He does only what God can do. Only what the divine can do. Jesus Christ. The divine son of God. True God and true man. We look at this gospel story, this healing of the ten lepers, and we can take it even a step further to see the power behind it. We look at verse 15. The Greek word for healing was hyatha, like the mending of a bone. And so when they were healed, when they were cured, yes, their whole body was cured. The fingers came back, their sight and vision came back, the skin healed, they were fully restored. And we look at verse 17, the word cleanse in the Greek, katharizomai. It's the word for cleanse, kath is the root word for catheter. If you have a blockage in your artery, in your heart, you have angioplasty and you clear out the blockage and all the impurities are removed. You are cleansed completely. And so not only was there a physical healing, the cleansing of the lepers implied that Jesus also forgave their sin that the healing was not just a physical healing, but a spiritual healing as well. And in verse 19, another Greek word is 
made well. And that word, it's so ditzo. It's the word for save. It's the same word used in Matthew's gospel about Jesus, the Christ who was to be born. A savior would come and save the people. That was the word. And so that healing saved those lepers. It brought salvation to them. That's a deeper understanding of that great work that God is doing, that he is doing all of this in our lives. And so we should be giving thanks. We should be thankful in all that we do this day. What is Thanksgiving? Well, Thanksgiving is not like this. Let me tell you a story. There's a dog who comes to a butcher shop. He's carrying a purse in his mouth and he sits right in front of the meat case. And the butcher looks at that dog and says, okay dog, you want some meat? Okay, what kind of meat? Bacon, liver, beef? Woo! Okay, you want beef, how much? A quarter pound? A half a pound? One pound? Woo! The butcher says, a pound it is. He wraps it up, takes it to the dog and finds the exact amount of money needed in that purse. He puts the beef into the purse and the dog takes the purse back in his mouth and heads out the door. And that butcher is just fascinated. He follows the dog down the street. The dog goes into an apartment, goes up to the third floor. And there the dog is scratching at the door. And then on the other side of the door, there's an angry man yelling, you stupid dog. And then he opens the door and the butcher says, that's the most intelligent dog I've ever met. And the man says, no, this is the third time this week he forgot his key. <laughs> he was unthankful for what he had. We ever experienced that? Then there's gratitude. A lady named Pam works in downtown Chicago takes the same route to work every day, walking a few blocks. Every day she passes by this old church building. Every day she's passing by this shabbily dressed woman in front of that church, soliciting money. And every day, Pam goes by and gives that lady in that shabby coat a little donation. This happens for over a year. And then one day, Pam is walking by that same street, past that same church, past that very same spot. The woman's not there. She's not there the next day or the next. And pretty soon Pam wonders what had happened. After a period of time, on a beautiful day, Pam is walking by the church again, that very same spot, and that woman was there again. Same shabby coat, still looking out at people. And so Pam went over, took out some money, was going to give her a donation. And the woman says, no thank you. Instead, she reaches into a bag and pulls out a gift. And she tells the woman, I found a job. And today I'm here only to look and recognize those people who have come by to help me over the past year. She gives her that little gift, a little box of donuts. That's gratitude, giving back. 
the blessings that we have received. And so today, Jesus comes along. He is coming along and he is saying to you, I value you. You may feel you are the least of all. You might feel you are the most of all. But God values you. And God honors your faith. If your faith has been rock steady for years and years or decades and decades, God honors that faith. Or if your faith is new, or if you are seeking faith, or if you've fallen from faith, or if you are returning to faith, God honors that faith. It is his gift to you. He has given you faith. It's a gift you can receive. And he will honor that faith. The trust that you can have in our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. And the Lord will cherish your gratitude. He will cherish your worship, your prayers, your offerings, your songs of joy, your celebration among brothers and sisters in Christ. God rejoices and he cherishes that kind of gratitude that we express in our everyday lives. That's what happens when Jesus comes along into our lives. In the name of Jesus, by his power, for his glory. Amen.